Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining me. You know, 2020 is rapidly coming to a close, and what a whirlwind of a year it has been. One of my favorite things to do at the end of every year is to not only look back over what I've read over the year, but also give some thought as to what I want to read in the year to come. I'm a fairly deliberate reader, and I found that it works for me if I actually plan out my reading with a bit more structure, um, you know, and sort of, sort of that way I'm reading what I actually want to read in my limited reading time as opposed to getting distracted and uh, just sort of losing my way. So I have put quite a bit of thought into what I would like to get read for. For 2021 and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to run through the fiction. I will do a separate video for the nonfiction, uh, but for the fiction um, I have also some books already in queue that will run over into 2021 so I will not talk about those on this video. Um, I did talk about those on the last haul video I did so I will link to the haul down below if you're interested in seeing that. I divided these uh, books up into my own sort of category Categories of literary fiction, I'm calling a category of mystical fiction. Um, I've got some uh, locked room mystery, some mystery and suspense. I've got some um, some hardboiled and noir fiction. I've got science fiction. I've got fantasy, and I've got some poetry. So this chat, I will wrap up with the poetry, but. These are not the order that I'm going to read these books next year. I will just read them how, whatever feels right at the time. Um, I will uh, sort of read them in that order when the time comes. I'm also leaving some room for those little gems that just drop in front of us that we just feel like call, compelled to read right when we see them. So I do have some room for those reads as well. So let's just jump into uh, the selections that I have um, Let's get started with some Hermann Hesse, Beneath the Wheel, originally published in 1906. I've been reading my way through the Hesse novels over the last few years now. I read Steppenwolf, Demian, Narcissus and Goldman, Siddhartha, The Glass Bead Game, and Rosalda. I've chatted all of those. I will link to those chats down below. The description of this really sounds really Hesse-ish. It's a young man who is an academic and goes away and is studying a re really ri rigorous academic sort of life and meets there a student who has a different worldview, who has the worldview of a poet, and the main character then struggles with some mental health issues surrounding the pressures of his worldview, academic life, and needs to come to terms with those. So this sounds really Hesse. I will be getting to this next year. Then I have Apartment by Teddy Wayne. This was originally published this year in 2020. It takes place in New York City. There's a, Our main character is in a writing program, MFA writing program at Columbia. He is an introvert and kind of a loner, has a difficulty making friends. When he gets a roommate uh, who he thinks they're going to be, uh, you know, they seem to be becoming good friends, uh, but they're, they do have quite a bit of differences as far as their upbringing, their class, their worldviews, and so um, this is coming to terms with that. Sort of issues of, I think, uh, isolation, loneliness, as well as masculinity. So it really sounded interesting to me, so I do want to get this read. I had actually had this on my list for this year and haven't gotten to it, so I did push that back to next year. All right, so then I have Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book is expected to be published in March of 2021. This will be a new release. Uh, it'll be the fourth of the Ishiguro novels that I've read. I read The Remains of the Day, Never Let Me Go, and The Buried Giant, but I did not chat those because I read those before I had a channel. So this will be the first of the Ishiguro novels that I have chatted. But Clara and the Sun, Clara is an AI. This is set in the future. She is an AI friend. She is designed to be a friend to humans, and she's very much looking forward to getting her human friend but, you know, we are humans. We know how we are, right? It might not be. The having might not be exactly what she's planning on. So I expect this to be really good. Then I'm calling this one Mystical Fiction. This next three books, Mystical Fiction, The Star Rover from by Jack London, published in 1914 originally. It says, this is a collection of short stories. This collection of short stories revolves around the concept of reincarnation. It tells the story of San Quentin death row inmate, 
Daryl Standing, who escapes the horror of prison life and long stretches in a straitjacket by withdrawing into vivid dreams of past lives, including incarnations as a French nobleman and as Englishman in medieval Korea. I had no idea that Jack London wrote, wrote this, so I am so excited to get to this next year. Then I have Strange Life of Ivan Osokin uh, by P.D. Ospinsky, published in 1915. This novel is a fictionalization of Nietzsche's concept of the eternal recurrence, right? The eternal recurrence is this idea that we are all the, we are eternally reliving the same life over and over and over again. I certainly hope that's not true, um, but this sounds really kind of interesting to me, uh, kind of right up my alley. It says, when the protagonist realizes that he can recall having lived his life before, he decides to try to change it, but he discovers that because human choices tend to be mechanical, changing the outcome of one's actions is extremely difficult. Uh, sounds so good. Okay, then I got War in Heaven, another mystical fiction I'm calling it by Charles Williams, published in 1930. I uh, read Descent into Hell by Charles Williams last year, and I chatted that, so I'll link to the chat below. This is a contemporary telling of the Grail story. There's also, I think, a murder mystery in here as well. It says, Williams gives a contemporary setting to the traditional story of the search for the Holy Grail. Examining the distinction between magic and religion, War in Heaven is an eerily disturbing book, one that graphically portrays a metaphysical journey through the shadowy crevices of the human mind. And I love this first the first sentence of this novel says, The telephone bell was ringing wildly, but without result, since there was no one in the room but the corpse. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that should be fun. Then I got three selections of locked room mysteries. I recently took one of the great courses, you know, those streaming courses you can take, and I took one of the great courses of mystery and suspense fiction. And in that course, these three, next three selections were talked about. They are all three locked room mysteries, which is, um, well, we'll talk about that more in a minute. The first one I'm going to get to is the first locked room mystery ever written, the Big Bow Mystery 18... Uh, published in 1892 initially uh, by Israel Zangwill. Zangwill. Um, yeah, so this is uh, should be really good. It's the first one of its kind. I read some mixed reviews on it, but I really wanted to read it because it is the first. It, it's actually defined the genre. So um, I have that one. Then I have The Mystery of the Yellow Room by Gaston LaRue, another locked room mystery. This one published in 1907. And considered by the professor who taught that course on mystery suspense fiction, I believe he had pegged this one as the still the best, considered the best of the locked room mysteries. So um, I am looking forward to this one. Then finally, I have another one called The Hollow Man from 1935. This is by John Dixon Carr. This was originally published in the U.S. as The Three Coffins. It says here... Um, is a classic, if not the classic, locked room murder mystery from the golden age of detective fiction. It secured this accolade not only for its own apparently impossible pair of murders, but also because of the Brevura lecture given by crime buster Dr. Gideon Fell, in which he outlines multiple different ways in which apparently impossible locked room murder mysteries can be done. So this book's got two different mysteries in it, murders in it. One of them takes place, I think, in the snow, and there's no footprints around the body. So that's a mystery. And then um, also it's known for that that sort of that, um, that lecture that the main character, Dr. Gideon Fell, gives the reader about locked room mysteries. So this one should be good as well. Finally, I, I'm, then I had next my next three selections are uh, hardball detective fiction or noir fiction. So I've got Farewell, My Lovely by Raymond Chandler. I'd actually hoped to get to this one this year, and I didn't. So this was originally published in 1940. This is the second of the Philip Marlowe detective stories. I read The Big Sleep a couple of years ago and chatted that, so I will link to the chat down below. It says um, the... Amazon reviewer called Boston Reader says it all starts with a guy named Moose. Um, it says there's a connection between Moose, a stolen necklace, a nut house, and a fortune teller. This one has it all. A maniac thug, drugs, guns, 
corruption and femme fatales, including a wealthy blonde. It starts out where a big white guy goes into a bar and gambling club for blacks. He's looking for his girlfriend, Velma. This has been adapted into several different films, but I really wanted to read the original novel this year, so next year, so it'll be coming up. Then I have this little gem of noir, noir fiction, Laura by Vera Caspery. Uh, this was adapted into a classic film noir starring Gene Tierney as Laura. This was an Otto Preminger movie. This book was originally published in 1942, and the film adaptation was in 1945. I believe it picked up an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. I could be wrong about that, but Laura is about this character. She is mysterious. She's. It says, Let, Laura is narrated in the first person by several alternating characters. These individual stories all revolve around the apparent murder of the title character, a successful New York advertiser killed in the doorway of her apartment with a shotgun blast that obliterated her face. So the book starts out, Laura's shot in the face, uh, you can't recognize her, but then we get to know her through the narration of others. So it's just going to be a noir, wonderful sort of noir journey to go on. Then I've got another one, Double Indemnity by James M. Cain, published originally in 1936. This one's about an insurance salesman who gets drawn into a wife's plot uh, to murder her husband. She's taking out some extra insurance, right? Why? Yeah. Um, so Double Indemnity is another one that's been adapted into a very famous noir, film noir, and definitely worth your uh, watch if you've never seen the film, but I do intend to get the book read. James M. Cain, the author, also wrote Mildred Pierce, which I read this year, and chatted, so I will link to that chat down below. Next, let's talk about some science fiction. So I've got... I'm going to finish out the Dune series. So if you've seen my ch my channel recently, I've been chatting uh, the Dune series. I've, I've gone through, I've already chatted two of them. I'm about to chat the third. I will be reading and chatting books four, five, and six next year. Book four is The God Emperor of Dune. Then we got Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune. So I have all three of those coming up. Um, in 2021, Dune takes place on the world, desert world of Arrakis that has this, uh, natural resource called spice, which the, in that entire civilization of thousands of planets really depends on, uh, lots of political philosophy here, authoritarianism, uh, religious, religion and government, a lot of themes in this science fiction. So check out the videos. I'll link the two of the chats that I've done already down below if you're interested. Then I've got The Inhabited Island, originally published in 1968-9 by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. I've been reading through the Strugatsky novels as well. This is Soviet-era Russian science fiction. I've read Roadside Picnic, Hard to Be a God, The Snail on the Slope. Monday starts on Saturday, The Doom City, and Definitely Maybe. I have chatted all of those. I will link to those chats down below if you're interested in hearing more about the Sugatsky Brothers' other works that I have read. Uh, the Inhabited Island is about a young space explorer that gets crash lands on this planet. The planet has just had, it's kind of a mid-20th century kind of like development. Uh, there are humanoids on this planet. He thinks everything's going to be great, but as he gets there a while, and gets in and, and, and interacts with their institutions classic sort of Strugatsky's institutions, sort of commentaries on institutions, um, you know, he finds out that their world, I think, is not quite what he was originally expecting. So, should be good. Um, then I got book four in the Terra Ignata series, Perhaps the Stars. This is also going to be a new release in 2021. This is book four of the Terra Ignata series by Ada Palmer. I love this series. If you like some kind of hard science fiction that really makes you think about what the future is, check out this series. The others are called Two Like the Lightnings, number one. Seven Surrenders is number two. The third one's called The Will to Battle. I will link to those chats of those first three in the series down below. Also, check her out on YouTube. She's got some interviews and talks that she's done. She's such an intelligent person. She's got such a grasp on how history becomes future. I just think she's an amazing uh, writer, and this world that she creates is just so much fun. This is probably the thing I'm, the new release I'm looking most forward to next year. I've been looking forward to this for the last like two years. 
All right, so then for our fantasy selections, I've got The Midnight Library uh, by Matt Haig. This was published this year in 2020. I have heard lots of good things about this. This says, Somewhere out beyond the edge of the universe, there is a library that contains an infinite number of books, each one the story of another reality. One tells the story of your life as it is, along with another book for the other life you could have lived if you had made a different choice. Doesn't that sound great? I just can't wait to jump into this. So this will be coming up. Then I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klein, another book published in 2020. What is it with me in 2020? I have read so many books published in 20, way more than usual for me to have read. Uh, 2020 seems to have been my publication year. Anyway, The House in the Cerulean Sea, this really sounds like me too. It says, Linus Baker leads a quiet, solitary life. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records. He uh, works as a caseworker at the department in charge of magical youth, and he spends his days overseeing the well-being of children in government-sanctioned orphanages. You know, we eventually come across a gnome, a sprite, a wyvern, an unidentifiable green blob, a were Pomeranian, and the Antichrist. <laughs> so uh, Linus eventually, uh, I guess... Um, has another uh, person that he's working with, the caretaker. It says, um, the children aren't the only, only secret the island keeps. Uh, the caretaker is the charming and enig enigmatic Arthur Parnassus, who will do anything to keep his ward safe. As Arthur and Linus grow closer, long-held secrets are exposed, and Linus must make a choice, destroy a home or watch the world burn. The House in the Cerulean Sea is about the profound experience of discovering an unlikely family in an unexpected place and realizing that family is yours. I just think this is so good. And from what I've heard, uh, other people have really enjoyed this as well. Then I've got The Night Circus from 2011. This is by Aaron Morgenstern. This was really popular when it came out. I have never read it, though. From 2011, it says, The circus arrives without warning. No announcements proceed. It, it is simply there when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents, is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amaz amazements. It is called La Cirque des Rives, and it is only open at night. Um, so, yeah, I guess that it says, uh, Behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway, a duel between two young magicians, Cecilia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood, especially for this purpose, by their mercurial instructors. Um, so... Apparently it's kind of like a competition, but yet I think there's a there's there there winds up being a love interest there as well. So this just sounds so magical to me and just so so good. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think this author has a new book coming out next year as well. So, but I wanted to read this one because I haven't ever gotten to it. Now let's talk about some poetry selections. I've got um uh my Beautiful Hook-Nosed Beauty Queen Strut Wave by Jeff Koss. The reason I selected this is, first of all, I love this title of this collection, but then it's also published by Design Books, uh, which is a publisher that I've read some of their uh, some of their publications, and I think they publish really interesting and kind of offbeat things. And so this poetry collection, you know, it says it's, the poems represent hope for a better tomorrow. I don't know a lot about them. I don't know anything about this poet. It just sounds like it would be really interesting or maybe, you know, potential. So I'm giving it... Uh, the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to give it a try. Then I've got Sometimes I Never Suffered Poetry Collection by Shane McRae. It says, In Sometimes I Never Suffered, his seventh collection of poems, Shane McRae remains a shrewd composer of American stories. Here, an angel, hastily thrown together by his fellow residents of heaven, plummets to earth in his first moments of consciousness. Jim Limber, the adopted mixed-race son of Jefferson Davis, wanders through the afterlife, re reckoning with the nuances of American racial history as well as his own. So this collection just really sounded really cool to me, and, um, you know, I just I really wanted to go ahead and give that a, a try. And then finally, I've got um, this collection, uh, Concordance, 
by Susan Howe. This was published this year in 2020. It says, in concordance, she has created a fresh body of work transmitting vital signals from a variety of archives. Since, since a semi-autobiographical prose poem opens the collection concerned with first and last things, meditating on the particular and peculiar affinities between law and poetry. It ranges from the Permian time of Pangea through Rembrandt and Dickinson to the dire present. Concordance, a collage poem originally published as a Grenfell Press limited edition, springs from slivers of poetry and marginalia cut from old concordances and facsimile editions of Milton, Swift, Herbert, Browning, Dickinson, Coleridge, and Yeats as well as from various field guides to birds, rocks, and trees. This collages, this sort of collage sort of um, thing uh, really appealed to me, so I really wanted to give this poetry collection a try. All right, that is it for my fiction. I will, that's a lot. Uh, I hope to get through all of these plus more in 2021, so stay tuned. I will have a chat coming up with my nonfiction selections, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, take care.